at all. I mean, I do, but I don't. Maybe I should make these videos by myself then. I don't know how to spell it. I got title clippers in case I get bored. Hey y'all, welcome back to another budget meeting vlogcast. I know some of y'all have been missing these videos. And thank you for your patience as you have waited on us to get back to them. We've mentioned that the kids are obviously home. Everybody's kind of quarantined right now. So the kids are home. So our time's been split up a little bit differently. We haven't been able to put as much time and filming into like the budget videos. And so more of it has been our family vlog like we've always kind of done. So I hope y'all have been enjoying those. If you don't enjoy those, then just hang tight because every month, for the foreseeable future until we get out of here. We'll be doing, still doing budgeting meetings or budgeting videos, most likely more towards the beginning of the month when yeah. we start going through like the monthly comparison, the budget for the month, closing out the budget from the previous month, and we may throw some other ones in there in between. Started getting on a better routine, I think, with the kids. Yes. We got our little red sign up right now on the door. If you missed yes. that video, go check it out. Definitely. So as far as being lot. able to film, yeah. then that's great and all. It's just the fact that previously when we would have like, you know, the entire day of doing work, there would be that time where we could look into other ideas or like formulate ideas for other budgeting videos. I did a big grocery shopping trip the other day, which we often, you know, will film and do all that, but it just didn't work out this time. So we didn't film the grocery haul this time because it was, it had already been the end of the a day, long day. Yeah. The kids were like ready to eat dinner and it was like, we've just got to unload all this and get it packed up and into the fridge. Anyway, today's video, we're going to talk about our actual budget for April and how much we ended up spending in April. Mm. Um, it was a little harder this month <laughs> as far as staying within the budget is a way to say it. Like in some categories we did, in some categories we didn't. It really stressed me out not using cash. Yeah, no cash. After you get used to the cash, oh my gosh, the monitor. That baby monitor has After you get used to spending with cash, once you go back, it's like frustrating. It is. And it's like, I think for me, the needing to like have the mental space, especially with the kids home and trying to, not just the kids home, like that's not the only thing. If you are in this whole quarantine thing too, you know there's been a lot of changes and a lot of different things that have to be tweaked and figured out and even going to the grocery store is a whole different like mental process. So weird. Um, for me, I, le I loved being able to sit down at the beginning of the month and do the budget, put the cash in the envelopes, and then there was no like, oh, hang on, let me remember to write this down and record this and deduct this and see, you went to this place and I went to this place or we spent this, now how much do we have left? Like, it was just in the envelope. And if you mm -hmm. needed to know how much cash was left in the envelope before you went to the store, you just looked. Yeah. And this way it was a little bit more difficult. I know there's some money we keep in our bank account as like a cushion, then some we also keep in for bills that maybe go out towards the end of the month or payments or whatever else. And so I hate looking and seeing a chunk of money in there that I'm like, what was that for? Like, yeah. I just can't remember. I truly do not like not spending in cash. Um, this is like the old school, like your grandmother balancing the checkbook almost. Like yeah. Making, you know, it's got the lists. So we talked about this last time for our budget. Instead of doing cash envelopes, we did cards for each envelope and wrote the total that we had and then deducted it out as we went. I did used to balance the checkbook, which I enjoyed. I like it this way if I have to do it this mm -hmm. way because it's easy to just look at the grocery one and see how much is in there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just like to save mental space and be done at the beginning of the month, but I feel like I've had to constantly stay on top of like recalculating yeah. everything going forward i think we're actually still going to need to use this card debit card method because cash is not really taken some place i mean they take it but there's a lot of places where you'll do like an online pickup order or whatever so hopefully get back to cash soon but in the meantime we're going to tell you all the difference between how much we budgeted for april and then how much we actually spent I will say before we start all that, we did not put any more money on the credit card or anything. No. As y'all know, those are frozen. Um, that shouldn't even be a question, but I know people will ask about it or mention like, you're gonna go into more debt because you're spending whatever. We have not used it credit cards, we have not obtained any more debt, we've only continued paying off debt. Like literally frozen, they're literally in the freezer. Literally yeah. in ice, we put ice in water. I cleaned water. the freezer up the other day to 
make room for groceries and I was like, what is it? Oh yeah. <laughs> so no worries. And we will have a video coming up on how much debt we paid off for the month. Yes. Okay. Going to our spending for April, we had budgeted. I'll start with the biggest one because this was a little bit controversial at the beginning of last month. Our gro for groceries, we had budgeted a thousand dollars, which is way more than we budgeted in previous months. But we talked about how with the coronavirus, we wanted to, or I, who was doing the grocery shopping, wanted to be able to go to one place and get everything or just about everything that we needed. For one, not to have to go back again, but I didn't want to have to go to multiple stores. And when we first started this budgeting thing, I would go to Aldi to get all the things that were cheapest there. And then I'd go to Sam's to get the things that were cheapest there and Costco to get the things that were cheapest there and Walmart to get the things that were cheapest there. And that just is not a safe or smart thing to do right now. Um, even though you can do pickup orders and whatever else, it's still just not, it, it's not conducive to no. right now. So there were some things that I knew I was gonna have to buy at Sam's for example, that would have been cheaper at Aldi. But for right now, it's what needed to be done. Virus was and Tom was. It's like, it takes twice as long now when you go shopping. That is something that while we spent more on our grocery budget this month than we would previously have, we plan to not do that in the future. So we're not like going back to the habit of spending $1,000 a month on groceries. So this month for groceries, we budgeted $1,000. Believe it or not, we actually went over budget on this one. So at the beginning of the month, I did a big Sam's grocery shopping trip. I think we did vlogs at that haul, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you can go watch and see what all I got. But there were a number of things that I got that will last for like probably six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're kind of going back a little bit to trying to buy some of those things in bulk. Whereas during the first two months of doing the budgeting stuff, we were only getting like what we needed for a week or two. We're also sustaining from previous Sam's wholesale packaging right. stuff that we had, clearing all that Like in too. February, when, yeah, we, when spent we first started 500 on groceries, we we're, ended up using all of our yeah. Previous. All the stuff we had stocked yeah. up. This month, we went over a little bit. It wasn't too terribly bad. Uh, we actually budgeted $1,000 and we ended up spending $1,146 on groceries. Also, it was not just groceries. I think that included cat litter mm -hmm. and dog food and something else big for the pets, but I can't remember what it was. Some of that budget that we went over was covered with, um, at the end of the month, our gas bill doesn't like get estimated, like our natural gas for our house doesn't get estimated till the end of the month. And I had overestimated it about like $85. So I was able to add some of that towards this. So we actually technically, once you even that out, only ended up going over by $61. So you just groceries. moved some of that over to this? Yeah, um, I moved that over to this card so that I could see like where everything mm -hmm was and then the $61 remaining was covered by the cushion that we keep in our checking account now which is amazing to not have to worry about like oh my gosh crap. Yeah. The next category was our miscellaneous or oh snap category sort of whenever so here's the deal in this category we had a video about this where we decided not to use our lawn guy that was a big debate um, and then we ended up deciding to do lawn stuff ourselves in doing that, we had to spend money on some things we needed for the lawn. We weren't able to just like go out and cut the, you know, whatever. Had to get some weed whacking up and stuff and a weed killer chainsaw, and a weed chainsaw. Killer, yeah. Helen was pressure washing the driveway, which shouldn't have been an extra expense, but then the hose busted. So we had to go get a new hose and then get gas for the pressure washer and a new little nozzle thing for it. So that was an extra $46 that we hadn't budgeted in, which obviously our lawn guy wouldn't have done, but it's one of those projects that needed to be done anyway. Um, I did buy $20, $19 worth of shirts for Brooks because Carter's was having a sale on shirts and he has outgrown a lot of his just like t-shirts. So I think I got four, three or four shirts for like $19, which wasn't a bad deal. That was including shipping and everything. Then we bought some things for Easter. So we bought the Easter eggs, the Easter egg candy, the, hopefully our kids aren't watching this video, <laughs> um, and a few things like that. There were actually some questions on the Easter video about the kids' Easter baskets. And we were very fortunate to have some brands send us lots of little different treats and things to go in there. So for their actual Easter baskets, I think we spent like ten dollars or something. Yeah, twenty again. maybe. Yeah. Maybe ten dollars per kid. Because I had bought stuff in the previous month. Oh yeah, that's right. From Michaels. Mm -hmm. So we had that stocked up in the brands stuff that they sent. It looked like we spent. It more looked than like we, we spent did, more than we did. So. Yeah. Yeah, we're very thankful to be able to do that. So mainly, the main thing was on like the Easter eggs and stuff, which we will reuse in the future. Right. So. Um, and then that ended up 
those things, the yard stuff, the shirts for Brooks, and then the Easter stuff, ended up, ending up putting us like $70 over budget. So we budgeted $30, then we ended up spending $100. However, the gymnastics bill that we usually pay for games, she obviously can't go right now. So we were able to add some of that money back in to cover that, which put us right at like still having $6 left for the miscellaneous category. So we kind of had to rearrange and regroup a little bit. Looking back on it, I mean, Kind of plucking money from other places, making it all even out as much as possible. I'm trying to decide on like, I guess we could have gone without buying the shirts for Brooks, but you know, like you don't want your kid wearing too, too small shirts. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, okay, so that's where we stand on that. The next category that we went over budget on was our eating out fund. <laughs> so this is something that we haven't spent any money on since we've been budgeting like $5. $6, $10 here and there. We have mostly not been eating out. Having been in quarantine, there's a lot of local businesses that are asking for support and obviously we can decide to or not to support them. We generally put aside a little bit of money, like I think we had budgeted $50 for the month for eating out and we usually only spend a little bit of it. But this time we did get Mexican to go, which we kind of had our mindset on it. And we were like, it won't be that expensive. We'll just pick up some tacos. And it was $32. And so that was one that I kind of regretted after he yeah. got back with it. Yeah. I was like, okay, I would have probably just gotten one a la carte taco and one thing of queso dip just to get my fix in. Yeah. You know? I think I got two quesos and two things of rice because it had been one of those, we hadn't been in months. Yeah. And we decided we were going to do it. And so, yeah, I regretted it the next day. <laughs> it was just one of those, like, bad quarantine decisions you know yeah. when you're in a in a place of like oh, oh my so gosh good, i'm gonna like we gotta just get out of here yeah yeah it was really good i just think i wouldn't have spent as much yeah. and we could have still stayed within budget and still gotten our like fix and then the next budget item was the boiled peanuts that you got another one of those like on facebook neighborhood facebook they posted it and they like, were delivering to your door wickle pickle flavor which is like a spicy oh. pickle flavor oh my gosh i splurged on that one too. it was it was a nice splurge and it's one of those things like i feel like we shouldn't we don't have to explain ourselves we're just kind of telling you guys our honest thoughts on this I don't feel like we failed i feel like there are things that we do as humans to kind of maintain our sanity to give ourselves a little treat or a little splurge every now and then i don't think that going a little bit over budget on this in this month in this situation is the end of the world no, yeah, we'll um, it's not something that we're like changing our trajectory of how we're going to handle our budget it is in every a decision every we made. bit of it got eaten i was eating i mm -hmm. every single bowl of peanut we ate uh, almost all the queso there's a little bit of queso left yeah i, I mean we could have licked the bowl but we didn't i think Gaines actually did lick yeah, our bowl. <laughs> and a little bit of salsa but so we went over what so we budgeted dollars we budgeted 50 dollars and we ended up spending 65 dollars and 18 cents so we went over budget 15 dollars in the big scheme of things okay. not the end of the world we made the conscious decision to do it realized we did it know how to change in the future. Fun envelope, we actually went right on budget with that. So we had budgeted $80, we spent $80. Um, it's quarantine, people are, you know, having more um, indulgement <laughs> in adult beverages, watching movies, renting movies, doing all that kind of stuff. So we stayed in budget on that. I think we did good on that. As far as like our health, vitamins, medication category, we actually ended up having a little bit left in that category because I had budgeted a little bit more. I uh, didn't need to buy any vitamins this month like I thought I would, so. So technically, could you take that and put it into the 15 negative of eating out and then we'd be even there as far as looking at it that way? Yeah, we could. And I think that's how it kind of ends up evening out. So yeah, like I as mean. Like first total everything at the end yeah but. and it was well it was something that ended up like towards the end of the month is when like you bought the peanuts on the 29th and then my our last like walgreens charge was the 27th mm. so it's kind of just like okay well i'll just leave it Maybe. so that next month like it'll kind of cover for each other and then next yeah. month we won't have to budget as much for Right. the medication or whatever. Next category where we had money left over is our doctor's visits category. And that's kind of, it's kind of like a combination sinking fund slash we use it every so often. We both have like maintenance doctor's visits and those types of things that we do that you have co-pays for. We kind of put a little bit of that in each month. So we had budgeted 
$75 and then ended up with $30 left. But that is money that I wouldn't move to another category because it's in there so that the next month we can still put in the same amount and then once we get to those doctor visits we'll have it there so mm -hmm. now the pets category we went way over budget on this we had budgeted $200 I was kind of thinking we still had a little bit of money in that envelope and I didn't realize that we had taken it out when we were doing our like quarantine stock up the previous month mm -hmm. which we talked about in our March video I don't know I guess I also didn't know how much the flea medication cost that we were buying so we budgeted $200 and we ended up spending $758. <sighs> that one was rough. So we went over budget $558 in that category. <sighs> we love our pets. But they are dang expensive. That doesn't <laughs> count food or cat litter or any of that either. We're kind of, we kind of gave up on putting that in the pet category because it just gets bought with the groceries. So we're budgeting that with the groceries these days. The two, Ada and Emma needed their checkup and their shots. And then the flea medication for each dog was $100 and for each cat was $50. Ooh. So that's $300 just for the flea medication. That will last us, I think, six months. Three months for the cats, six months for the dogs. We've talked about this in a previous video too, how we know you can get cheaper stuff at Walmart or wherever else. None of that stuff worked for our pets. They've all had fleas really bad last year because we live in like an area where there's lots of natural wooded space. It was a B to get rid of those things. It was awful. Like, it's not fun at all. And so like we Like when wanted... your dog rolls over and you just see a freaking nest of fleas just <laughs> they crawling. They crawl over. It's like, oh my gosh, I would like would get in the shower with them for 20 minutes just trying to just get, because when they get wet, especially Emma being short hair, you see everything. And white, her white oh, it was fur. awful. It, so it's just, it's really not fun. If you have pets, you know that these things happen. It doesn't mean anything bad about you or your pets. It happens. And they're really, really hard to get rid of. So we wanted to start out the year going with something that we knew would work for them. And it might be expensive up front, but it's gonna save us in the long run because last year we spent way more medicine, I mean way more money trying out different flea medications, mm -hmm. trying different like flea treatments for the house and the yard and I mean like a hundred dollars on just buying like flea bombs you know, and like, flea yeah, powder three, and spray. Yeah, and, three or four flea bombs and stuff. Oh my gosh. So mm. luckily those were gone and so far things have been good this year. The dogs are using Next Guard and the cats are using Brovecto. So yes, we have tried the Soresto collars. They didn't work for any of our pets. I think that was it. So as far as everything goes, it all kind of evens out. There was not so much that we ended up like overdrawing our account or dipping too far into our cushion. Everything I feel will be covered by that. And then for the pets, we just decided that we would make sure that we kind of took it out for this month because we're not gonna be needing to spend. We'll kind of pay ourselves <coughs> back for that mm -hmm. over the next month or two because we're not gonna be needing to spend the money on the flea stuff. For this I did make month. another Facebook market. Place still, and now it goes back to the whole like it's so nice to have cash. You almost we talked about it, but you're like, I'm not depositing this, we're gonna put this in our envelopes because I mm -hmm. want the cash. I literally um, said, I was like, let me go deposit this, and then we'll pay off a bill with it. And then I was like, actually, I'm just gonna hold on to it so I can put it in an envelope, and then we'll use when the paycheck comes and, in. Yeah. yeah, so we do have some money that we got from that, and then your unclaimed funds came in. Oh, yeah. From that we filed back in February. So we'll talk about all that and where that money is going to pay off which bills because we're gonna be paying off some more debt this month. And doing a comparison video, is that what's next? Yes, I think next the video? monthly comparison monthly video comparison. will be next. So we'll compare, this time I'm doing 2018 and 2019. Ooh, Ooh it's interesting. I really wanna go back to 2017, but I don't wanna overwhelm y'all with numbers. So if you wanna see 17 also, which is the year we moved, April was the month we moved, I'm really thinking it would've been an out of control month. Oh. I should probably do it. I should probably do it. Just yeah, look at it. like maybe probably way out of control. Yeah, I've already pulled 18 and 19, but maybe I'll pull 17 too. Because we did not even care. We were like, we're moving. I can't think straight. At mm. the six month old, that's we crazy. Were a hot mess. Whew. Anyway, let us know how your budget went for April, given the quarantine and all the stuff. Did you go over budget? Did you go under budget? What's all your favorite things? curbside pickup? <laughs> Yeah. So our splurge was honestly the peanuts and the Mexican. Thank Thanks you guys for watching. So much for watching. Hope y'all are washing your hands, wearing your masks, and we will see you at the end of this. Good Bye. Bye.